good evening can you hear me yes okay so we let wait for yes sir good evening sir let's and then start yeah Okay, so shall we start? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay, so we will uh, continue this study of. multivariable calculus okay so what we have done so far is to understand limits of multivariable functions continuity and the idea of partial derivatives which led to the idea of a gradient of a function and then we also studied uh, the directional derivative okay so directional derivative what else uh, did we study last week mm, i think that's all right that's about what we have till week 9 gradient also sir sorry gradient also ah yes yes yeah that i, I think i mentioned that right so the partial derivatives which leads us to the idea of gradients so that is what we have done so far so what we will do this week is an extension of these ideas and uh, there is some natural relationship between single variable calculus the ideas we discuss in single variable calculus and uh, multi variable calculus so those are the ideas of functions value when it is increasing when it is decreasing and uh, how do you write down the equation of a tangent to a function at a point so that those ideas will get uh, reflected in multi variable calculus also and i think we also studied in max 1 you might remember this linear approximation so the i don't know if you studied this in max 1 but given a function of one variable can you find the best approximation uh, the best linear approximation to it at a point okay so this is some something that we will do this week so first so i i have some activity questions which i have lifted from the portal so we'll discuss them but uh, before that uh, we'll quickly go through the concepts right so there is this uh, idea of when a function is increasing or decreasing okay so let's take a familiar function in r from r to r okay so this is like something that's familiar to us where f is given by f of x uh, equal to let's say x square okay now we'll maybe we'll plot x square and uh, ask the following question right so f of x equal to x square looks something like this and uh, you have to consider the point x equal to 1 okay so at x equal to 1 what happens to the function is it increasing or decreasing we have to look 
that uh, from which way we are approaching it typically we when we say this at x equal to 1 it will mean from left to right right so you as x increases does f of x increase or not right so that is the convention if you follow that convention at yes, the point x equal to 1 it is increasing right so f of yes. x equal to f of x is increasing where we assume that or where we follow this convention right so we follow this convention where we are asking the following so i'll box it what happens to the function as x increases right so what happens to the function as x increases we answer that question here at x equal to 1 the function is increasing so at x equal to this is one point now at x equal to minus 1 what is happening to the function decreasing f of x is uh, decreasing now i'll delete this okay at x equal to 0 what happens to the function nothing i mean it changes from decreasing to increasing right okay so it's kind of stationary there it's it's yeah you are right it, it's it starts just to the left of x it is decreasing as it so as it goes closer and closer to x it starts the function starts increasing Action but here point. sorry this point has a name right inflection point if i am not wrong uh this is a extremum so this is not exactly an inflection point for x cube if you look at x cube it is an inflection point here it's a local minimum okay it's a minimum here so just to the left and so this is the lowest point in the function right so as you go so strictly speaking if you go from if you look at the neighborhood of zero right we use the word neighborhood to the left of zero the function is decreasing and to the right of zero the function is increasing right so it's kind of maybe i should i just use i'll slightly modify this what happens to the function in the neighborhood of x is a better way of putting it so okay so this is what british english or english american english okay so this is a better way of putting it so what happens to the function in the neighborhood of x equal to a so in the neighborhood of x equal to 1 as you approach 1 and you go to the right of 1 the function is increasing in the neighborhood of minus 1 as you approach minus 1 and you go beyond minus 1 the function is decreasing so the direction is the convention is the direction is from left to right right so let's so you start from the left hit the point and then you move right so the function is either increasing or decreasing or you, you can't really comment on it because it's stationary so i'll leave this blank okay so this is the idea of what happens to a function at a specific point okay this is all this is a local behavior okay this is a what do i mean by local behavior is this is something that is specific to the point x equal to 1 right so we are not talking about what happens to the function everywhere okay in fact we can't talk about that here so f of x is decreasing at certain points it is increasing at certain points at, at the point 0 it kind of stays constant okay so it neither increases or it both increases and decreases in a certain sense right so we can't universally say that at all points f of x is increasing or at all points f of x is decreasing though there are some functions you could think of right for example f of x equal to 2x right so f of x equal to 2x is increasing everywhere right so any any point you take it's increasing or f of x equal to minus 2x is decreasing right at at all points but in general for a general unknown function you can't pin down exactly what will happen globally right so there is no global behavior so do you all are you all fine with this uh, the statement that this is a local behavior that we are study yes yes okay so that's what we really mean by this the term neighborhood so just around the point a what is happening okay so this is you have the graph with you therefore you are able to make out what's happening to f of x whether it's increasing or decreasing but then for a general function for any general function is there a way so is there a way to figure out 
what happens to f of x at x equal to a without looking at the graph obviously right because you can't keep plotting everything so without looking at the graph can you figure out what is happening to x equal to a and how do you do that we can look at the slope at that point right okay so we can look at the right exactly so we can look at the slope of the tangent so that will give us the information we need so what is that it's f dash of x right so f dash of x or f dash of a contains all the information that we need to conclude about the behavior of f around the point a right so we have these two conditions right so if f dash of a is positive that implies what increasing increasing okay so the function is increasing at x equal to a and uh, the other case is if f dash of a is so we can also say it as instantaneous direction right ah uh, right yeah that is also valid okay for example here f dash of 2 f dash of 2 is equal to what 4 this case 4 uh, right f dash of 2 is 4 So four is greater than zero; it's increasing. Okay, even without looking at the graph, you can conclude that the function is increasing or decreasing by looking at the derivative at that point. Okay, so the function is decreasing if f dash of a is less than zero, then function is decreasing. Okay, if f dash of a equal to zero, then it's a point of it's a it's a critical point. So as they say, it's a stationary point. So they they sometimes they call it it's called a stationary point and we really don't know right we can't so this question of is it increasing decreasing business really doesn't come into the picture here so we will leave this out for now okay we'll just look at these two very explicit clear cases of when the function is increasing when it is decreasing okay so this idea you should have in the back of your mind before we move to functions of two or more variables so is this idea clear the using the derivative to conclude the nature of the function's behavior at a point yes sir okay so now we move to multivariable the case of functions two or more variables so it's always easy to look at only the two variable case right so let's look at the function x comma y is x square plus y square okay so this is a direct generalization of this x square right so i am not going to draw this i am not going to plot this you have to visualize this bowl like shape you must by now we get used to this uh, visualizing 2d simple 2d functions right uh, functions of two variables so this this is like a bowl centered at the having its base at the origin okay 0 0 0 and then you are keeping the bottom of the bowl there okay so now we'll extend we'll ask the same questions that we asked here right uh function is increasing or decreasing so i want to ask this question is is f increasing at 2 comma 3 for example okay is this do you think this is a valid question yes yes okay so is it increasing what i what do you say is it increasing or is it decreasing increasing, increasing. okay why do you say it is increasing after differentiating and putting the value of x and y we get greater than 0 okay so what will you differentiate it with we have to do that gradient and right partial derivative of x and we y can't. both 2x comma 2y okay okay so see this is the if you have, if you if you take away anything from weeks 9 10 11 regarding multivariable functions that should be this right so this this is a key idea when you deal with multivariable functions right the idea of direction of movement is critical okay critical okay so when it comes to functions of two or more variables okay this is a very important point just because it helps you understand it better okay so when you look at the point 2 comma 3 okay the function kind of stretches across you in all possible directions right so 2 comma 3 so let's just uh, let's just plot 2 comma 3 i'm i'm only going to do a uh, what 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 you call the 2d plot you have to visualize the function stretching beyond you there 
okay sir i think there was the option for plot 3d ah uh, yeah plot 3d is there but then it looks a bit clunky it doesn't look that good so what i'll do is it, uh, as x square means uh, it is kind of revolving around that and making a 3d object ah uh, right yeah fair enough we could we could do that uh, we'll we, uh, we'll try to do that but uh, for now what i'll do is uh, i'll just me ask you to cons yeah just give me a minute one minute Yeah, sorry. So what happens is, at the point two comma three, we are trying to ask this question: Does the function increase or not? Okay. So that question, what I am claiming is, in, it's, in, it's incomplete. Okay. So this is an incomplete question because you have not specified in which direction you are actually looking at. Okay. So always remember this: your domain is R two. Okay. So we are now looking at the domain and we are looking at this point 2 comma 3 the function is stretching over the top of your of the board or the laptop screen okay and depending on which direction you are looking at the function will change okay so let's look at few directions let's uh, look at one direction let's say y equal to 0 right so if you set y to be 0 you are looking at the x axis okay you are at this point you are okay, i can't say y equal to 0 i have to say i am i'm looking at the point 2 comma 3 right so if i want to only focus on the x axis what should i set y to any constant yeah so at the point right i want to study the function's behavior at 2 comma 3 and uh, i want to look at only the x axis how the so function so y will be i have to set y to be 3 3 right so three. if i set y to be 3 i can now look at this simpler function of i'll call this g of x right it's now only a function of x so g of x will be what x square plus nine. x square plus 9 okay so let's now i'll remove this to 3 so we are now plotting this g of x so this is x square plus 9 so x square Sir, plus I have a yeah that point two comma three should also have that uh, z coordinate right you haven't specified it it it's has simply... right so z coordinate is the function's value no no that two comma three point should have right it will have some z value right so two square plus three square so four thirteen will be the z coordinate okay right so i am now plotting two comma so this the i have cut the function across this y equal to three line so i end up with x square plus nine now at this stage what point should i look at the point two right so x equal to two is what i'm interested in so i will so this is best represented as follows so x equal to two so x equal to 2 is going to intersect this in some point. What is that point? Some point, right? So I hope you, it's fine fine with you, right? I'm not specifying what point it intersects. Okay, so now using this image that you have with you, can you comment on what happens to f of x comma y at 2 comma 3 along the x-axis? Is the function increasing or decreasing? So okay see what we have done is we are focusing on one direction at a time right we are currently looking at the direction x-axis right so when i want to study what happens to the function along the x-axis i'm i have to fix y to be a constant so i set y to be three yes okay so therefore the function becomes x square plus nine 
okay x square plus 9 and at x equal to 2 i'm i'm focusing on what happens in and around the point x equal to 2 y equal to 3 so what is happening to the function increasing so it is increasing so in this direction what we have concluded is f is increasing at 2 comma 3 okay so now let's take some other direction in this case let's take the next obvious direction is fixing x yeah so you are looking at the y axis now along the y axis so you fix x equal to 2 so the function now becomes what I it will become say g of y equal to 4 plus Y square. y square right now we can plot this look something like this right so i'm going to don't worry about what i plot here i i, I am plotting it with, with respect to y but for convenience i will use the term x itself okay so this is something internal you should not worry about this so we are plotting this is the plotting plotting this at x equal to 2 y equal to 3 right so now this should be okay right so this is okay don't worry about uh, so this is how f of x comma y looks like when you fix the x axis right x, x equal to 2 and you look at the point y equal to 3 so you are again looking at 2 comma 3 and the function is again increasing again increasing right but notice the okay we'll come back to that so in so if this is this turned out to be a simple function where you, no matter which direction you are focusing, the function is increasing. Okay, let's take a slightly different function. Sir, in this case, like whenever the function is increasing, we are talking about uh, the positive y and positive x directions, not the other way around, right, sir? Like yeah, yeah. So we are looking at this. The, we, we have this idea of uh, left to right along that direction, uh, at that point, right? So at, at, along that direction, we come from the left to right. So as okay. yeah, x increasing, y increasing. Okay, sir. Okay, now let's look at a slightly different function which will uh, sir, you did not look at any other direction apart from the x and y axis uh, that is true that is true so if you look at any direction right so if you look at uh, whatever direction you think of this it will turn out that okay let's let's look at some other direction okay that's a valid point so let's look at uh, Maybe the direction. Sir, take a negative slope means a direction towards the negative. Uh, right. So let's say minus one comma minus one. Right. So we are looking at the vector. Right. So this is. Let Let me go back and make this slightly more clear. So in terms of a vector, what direction is this? And I say x-axis. I'm I'm one looking comma at zero. okay. The direction is one comma zero, right? So along the direction one comma zero, the vector pointing in the direction one comma zero, f is increasing. What about this direction? This will be zero comma one. The unit vector basically. Okay, right. This is okay. This is a better way of writing it. Okay, so now let's look at the direction minus one comma minus one, and let's see what happens. So. Oh, this is slightly tricky. Mm. Sir, even if we do minus one comma zero, then maybe then we we'll do zero comma minus one, then we'll combine. That would be same of just wait minus zero. We are taking no, no, no. If it is increasing from if it is in one zero, it is increasing. Then minus one zero. Uh, okay, that's a valid point. So we can just look at. Uh, minus 1 comma 0 and uh, this will be the opposite of what happens to 1 comma 0 right that's a valid point so if you look at minus 1 comma 0 then what can you say about f it is decreasing sir. it is decreasing okay yeah that's i think that's a simpler example we can just instead of going all the way we can just look at a simple case of minus 1 comma 0 and likewise, you can also extend this to 
another direction meaning may namely 0 comma minus 1 okay here also f is sir but in the minus 1 comma 0 we are going left side correct yeah in the direction yeah so in the so Yes. Yeah, you're right. So the, the direction of movement when it comes to multivariable function, uh, so functions of two variables is the direction of the vector you have chosen, right? So from the tip of the vector, so it's something like this. If you are, you are looking at the point, now I have to go to 2D, right? Think of this as uh, the domain of F, right? The domain of F is what? It's going to be 2D, right? So you're actually looking at the point 2 comma 3, 2 comma 3 is in the domain, right? So let's first plot the point, which is uh, 2 comma 3. So I am looking at the function's behavior at 2 comma 3. So the directions that I have chosen are, I have chosen four directions. One was 1, 0. So this was one direction. So 1, 0. Okay, it should start from 2 to 3. So don't worry what I write here. This is just vector addition that I am doing. Okay, this is one direction, and uh, the other direction was uh, what was the other direction? Two, three, comma, the one perpendicular to this, right? So this was one, comma, sorry, two, comma, two, right? No, two, comma, four. So zero, comma, one direction. Okay, from two, yes. three, you are looking at in this direction, and the other two directions that we considered were uh, what were they? 2, 3, comma. So, one, if you subtract that, yeah. this is the other direction. Okay. This is the minus 1, comma 0 direction. And finally, you have 2, 3, comma 2, 2, right? So, th these are the four directions that we have looked at. So, if you, if you look at f of x equal to x square plus y square and you stand at the point 2, comma 3 and you start moving along this direction, function will increase. If you move along this direction, function will decrease. If you go go to the top, it will increase. If you go to the bottom, it will decrease. So this is, left one is minus 1, comma 0 direction. Yeah, left one is minus 1, comma 0. But sir, function is increasing in this way, no? Or no? Uh, no, no, right? If you, if you, so if function is what? X square plus Y square. So if you, if you decrease the value of y, which is what it means, right? Moving along y minus one zero, decreasing the value of x is the same as saying the function we are moving along the direction minus one comma zero. Correct. So when you look at the graph, is it? Will, yes. Yeah. Um, if you look at yeah, if you look at the graph, it will be some kind of parabola, and you are moving to the left of the parabola, right? And it is increasing, sir. If you go to the left of the parabola, it will decrease, right? When you're on the so but you're on the right. Like you have said like a bucket kind of thing. So how it will decrease if you it will be a uh, circle, right? In that no, you're not one. slicing, right? You are slicing it parallel to the so as we move to its origin, it will become lesser in value. Yeah, so see when you slice it at y equal to some constant this becomes just x square plus something right which is a parabola yes sir so when you move to the left of x when you keep decreasing x the value of the function will decrease right so fix y so you are at see you are at so this is the domain right you are all are you all convinced that i have plotted the domain yeah domain of f right so this is i have plotted the domain of f and I've taken a point in the domain, which is 2, comma 3. Now, if you look at, if you stand at 2, comma 3, what is the function's value? If you stand at 2, comma 3, so the function's value is f of 2, comma 3, which is? 4, comma 9. 13. Which is 13, right? 13. Now, what I'm claiming is, if you move in the direction minus 1, comma 0, let's say you move one unit in minus 1, comma 0, what? What should I evaluate here? 1, 3. 1, 1, 3, right? So f of 1, 3 is what? 10. 10, right? Which is what? Which means that function is decreasing, right? So I'm I'm yes, moving sir. in the direction minus 1, 0. So the function is decreasing. Okay, so is this so the the takeaway is when you're looking at 
functions of two variables you can't just ask the question is f increasing at 2 comma 3 that's an incomplete question you have to ask what is happening to f at a point in a given direction okay so this is what makes a complete question if you are in if you're dealing with multivariable functions so the direction is important yeah without the direction the comp question is incomplete right we do so as you have just seen depending on what direction you choose the function could either increase or it could decrease or it could stay constant in fact if you choose a particular direction in this case say minus one comma one so if you choose uh, okay so that is a bit hard to express here anyway so let's we'll come to that soon okay so is this idea clear what happens to a function's value in a neighborhood yes, of sir. a point yes okay sir. so now what we have to do is we have to ask this question this, this is a natural question to ask uh, maybe i'll take a concrete example where this gets used so this gets used in a, a lot in optimization okay so so okay so what is what we are going to do now is just give me one minute i'll frame a okay right so it's actually a very simple so you have a function that gives you the distance of a point from a food source right so there is let's say you are you are in a you are in a city and there are there is one very important food source okay which is located at some point and uh, the distance you, you are at some x comma y in that space right so think of this as a flat 2d area and you are located at x comma y so you are located at at the point x comma y in some flat space okay and uh, there is a foot source at some point in the space and you want to your right your goal is to get close to this foot source right so to to identify this foot source so your distance from the foot source is given by this this kind of an equation so x minus 2 whole square plus y minus 3 whole square equal to the distance this is how far you are away from the foot source okay now if you are actually at the foot source the distance from it will be zero okay so your your task is to in some sense uh, find the minimum of this function okay this is what we call an optimization problem right so you want to minimize a function you want to get as close to the foot source as possible okay now do you understand the problem statement yes sir okay so f is what f is the distance from the source okay and you want to get as close to the source as possible in, in this case it's obvious so can you tell me what that where the foot source is located two comma three the closest we can be will be at two comma three at Correct. the point yeah so at two comma three right here it's very trivial you can clearly see that uh, this is what is happening but in general f may not be so simple okay so one way of solving this when you assume just humor me and assume that f is a very difficult function what typically people do is they they do an iterative procedure okay so that's how they solve this and this procedure is called uh, gradient descent okay so they, they call it gradient descent and it's called okay so you you take any point x comma y okay so you take any point x comma y now ideally what is your what what will you do if you are at some point x comma y 
you are allowed to move around in the space right so what will be your target or what what will be your goal uh, the direction in which the lens is minimum minimum value okay right so you are you are going to move your job is to get closer to the foot source so my aim will be to to choose a direction that will decrease my distance as much as poss possible okay so assume that you are in every 10 seconds you are allowed to take only certain number of steps right you can't you can't run or jog okay you can only walk so every 10 seconds you will be at x, x1 y1 so if you are at what do i mean by iterative so if you are at some point x1 comma y1 at time step 1 then you can go to some other point x2 comma y2 at time step 2 and then you can make one more jump to x3 comma y3 so on and so forth hopefully after you do let's say 100 such steps x100 y100 hopefully you are at the foot source right so this is what the process is looking like so in every every time step when you want to move from the point 1 to point 2 it will be great if you can choose a direction where your distance will decrease as much as possible so is this intuition clear to you all yes sir. yes okay so that so therefore the question is in terms of calculus the question we are framing is what is the direction in which the function's value decreases to the maximum extent possible okay so I, I am at some point let's say i'm at the point let's take a concrete example of a point let's say i am to, to begin with i'm at the point x1 comma y1 equal to say 7 comma 5 okay i am at 7 comma 5 now i am allowed to move some unit distance in any any direction okay i can choose any direction 360 degrees i have options so the question is which direction should i move so that my distance reduces the, the to the maximum extent right so there should be greatest reduction in distance and that is what i, I am looking for okay so this is the idea of what what was the title of the first section right so this direction of steepest ascent and descent so here we are looking at this is called the direction of steepest descent okay so this is called the direction of steepest descent so we are looking at that direction where the function will decrease the most okay so now let's go back to one variable function right so if you have f of x you only had two directions right so you could either move right or you could move left so no choices here so it's a very easy problem here but you have infinitely many directions here okay so how do you determine which direction to move using the gradient okay using the gradient but how will the gradient help the gradient is basically the uh, derivative of the function so maybe we can use the directional derivative and uh, we want some u so that uh, the whole derivative value is decreasing successively okay right that's right so we look at the uh, both are in a sense right because we need the directional derivative so what does the directional derivative give you so this is a very important concept that's why we studied this in week nine so what is what exactly does the directional derivative tell you rate of change at a particular point in that direction correct right so how, how does the function behave at a point if you move a certain distance along a particular direction okay that's what it, it gives you and for a well-behaved function such as x square plus y square the directional derivative is given by what if, if your direction is u u1 comma u2 what is the directional derivative at that point Okay. Right. right. So this is the, at the point, right? So we are now looking at the 
rate of change of the function at a point say a comma b in the direction u1 comma u2 okay uh, let's call this u so the there is a lower tilde that is there in the lectures but what we'll do is i hope you'll be able to distinguish this so i'll just call it if you at a comma b right so this is the directional the rate of change of the function at a comma b in the direction u so this is given by the gradient at that point dot product of the gradient with the vector u okay this i hope everyone is clear with this idea of yes okay no? yes yes okay, so what is happening is if you move a small distance right and the small is qualifier small is very important if you move a very small distance along u1 u2 this is the rate at which the function is going to change right instantaneous or right at that point this is how the function is going to change okay now what have we asked we have asked for the direction of maximum decrease in the function's value okay so in what direction should we move if you want the function's value to decrease rapidly what direction from from this if you can you figure out what direction it should be okay so, right so negative, for negative negative sir the dot product should give negative correct right so when when is the dot product most negative so maybe so maybe minus 1 will be direct and minus 1 okay the direction which is opposite to the one in which the gradient is pointing at okay so the best way is to plot this okay so we will plot there are certain things that i will plot you you don't need to focus on all of that the final graph is what we need so we are at we are at the point 7 comma 5 right concrete example we'll take the point 7 comma 5 so we are here and uh, from here what do we do we we do the following that we need that cos theta term in uh, where to be negative one right uh right yeah so that is that so what we will do for that is we'll come to that okay this you ignore if you know this well and good but if even if you don't know this do not worry okay so i am at the point 7 comma 5 and i'm looking at all possible directions from the point 7 comma 5 okay so this so far we have this right so 7 comma 5 is this point and we are looking at all possible directions of movement now let's plot the gradient okay what is what is the gradient at 7 comma 5 for this function x x minus 2 whole square plus y minus 3 whole square what is the gradient at 7 comma 5 Two into seven yes. minus. Yeah. So this is. Let's first write down the gradient in general. So this is. This is what two into x minus two. Into and three into. Sorry, two into. Y minus three. Do you all agree that this is the gradient? Yes. Okay. Now the gradient at uh, a particular point. so this is 7 comma 5 we are computing the gradient this turns out to be 10 to 4 5 10 up 10 comma sorry 10 comma what 10 comma 4 okay so 10 comma 4 is the vector i get so i'm going to plot this vector there so it the vector will start from 2 comma 3 it's the the end of the vector will be in 2 comma 3 so i'll start from 2 comma 3 and i'll go to 7 comma 4 no, sorry 10 comma 4 right so this is 10 plus 2 and 7 so why are you starting from 2 comma 3 ah uh, because the base of the vector is there right so you can start it from origin also that's that's correct but sorry not 2 comma 3 you are right so it should be 7 comma 5 7 comma 5 and 
सेवेंटीन कमा नाइन इज दट करेक्ट ओके सो दिस इज द ग्रेडियंट सो लेट्स या Why is 17, 9? Uh, that is because I have just added it, right? This is just vector addition. So, see, this is seven comma five. From this, the vector starts at seven comma five, and it should go. It should point in the direction ten comma four. So, ten plus seven and five. Yeah. So that's why ten plus seven and. Five plus four, right? You, so this is this is na, the gradient, right? So this is what nabla of f of seven comma five. This is the gradient. So we are at the point seven comma five. The gradient points in this direction. Now we are asking the following question, right? In which direction should I move so that my function's value decreases, right? So what I have drawn in the circle. is all possible directions right of unit vectors so for example you can take one such direction which is uh, let me add one direction let's say 7 comma 5 and let's say this is 7 comma 4 okay this is one direction now another direction is what it could be 7 comma 6 this is another direction okay now another useful direction to know so you can tell me what this actually is so this is 7 this is 10 comma 4 right so this is going to be 7 comma 5 minus 4 by 10 uh Okay, this is a bit tough, uh, so let me not let me not venture there. But yeah, I've taken just two directions. Now let's look at one more direction. So if I want the negative, if I want to be completely opposite to the gradient, what direction should that be? Negative seven. For a negative seventeen, negative nine. So we have to reduce that ten comma four, right? So. Three, three comma one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Minus three comma one. No, just three comma. Yeah, minus three comma one. Yeah. Ah, uh, so five. So how did you get that? Subtracting that gradient from this seven comma five. Okay, no. So the gradient is ten comma four, right? Yes, sir. So the opposite of that will be minus ten, minus four, and then you are adding, adding it to seven comma five, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so can you tell me what that turns out to be? Seven comma five and minus, minus three comma one. Okay, so you have to normalize this, but then that was also not. okay but i hope you get the idea so i'll just stick with the idea so these are three directions that i have drawn okay now among these three are you able to see that this this one which is pointing in the opposite direction is the one which will reduce the function's value the most we want to get the origin right means that's what you mean by reduction yeah so we want to go in we want to take steps right one at a time and every yes. step we take should be such that the function's value decreases the maximum okay so this is what we call the direction of steepest ascent so if you choose the vector u to be negative of the gradient okay unit vector in the negative direction of the gradient that will make this dot product most negative okay and therefore the function's value will decrease the most so let me just write it write this down so if this part is not very clear you can you can actually bring in the whole cos theta business right so how can i write, rewrite this dot product you of two vectors cos theta sir norm of f of a comma b and norm of u and cos theta 
Okay, so this is the norm of this and norm of u. So norm of u is what? One. One, one right? So we can just replace this with cos theta, where theta is the angle between this gradient and any one of this purple vectors, right? So let's say this is one direction. This is u. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll just delete they'll, they'll delete the other directions and I'll hold on to just one of them. Let's say this direction. So theta is this angle that you see here. So the amount, the rate of change of the function at two comma at seven comma five in the direction zero comma minus one, right? So this is zero comma minus one will be given by this expression, this dot product, which turns out to be whatever you see here. Okay, this is we are moving in the direction like of that purple uh, vector. Right. Sorry, can you repeat that? We are moving in, we are uh, taking the gradient with respect to the direction of that purple vector, right? Right, right. And that theta is the angle between the gradient vector and this uh, purple vector. vector. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so now you can, you can also argue from this angle that the function's value will decrease the maximum when cos theta is negative one minus one and so the 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 other idea is steepest ascent okay so so steepest ascent is actually when will the function's value increase so the, the max sorry so yeah so in the direction of the uh yeah go on yeah uh, sir i didn't understand the concept of adding uh adding to get the positive direction, adding the gradient to the original vector, and then subtracting the gradient from the original vector for the negative red. That I didn't understand. Why are we adding to the gradient and not just pointing towards the gradient? Okay, so you mean how we got this orange vector? Uh, is so that that doesn't normalize, that is the problem, right? Mm, I'm sorry. So I didn't get the question. So are you? So the so gradient turned out to be ten comma four. You're asking why we didn't just plot ten comma four and then plot at something else? Is that what you're? Yes. So actually, I was assuming that seven comma five is pointing towards ten comma four, but then it is not pointing towards ten comma four. It is pointing towards the addition of these two vectors. That is seventeen comma three. So that is confusing. Why, sir? Uh, which one? So this one you're saying the orange vector. Sir, I just want to understand the concept behind 17, 9 and minus ah, okay. 3, 1. Okay, okay. So see this. If you go go back and the, the gradient is what? 10, 4, right? That is the gradient. So if you if you try to plot this here, you will end up plotting. So do you see that these two vectors are parallel? Yes, sir. So this is the this is the gradient, okay? The ten comma four is the gradient. Yes, sir. Now what I've done is to keep. See, the, it's easier to move the origin of this vector here. So I have just added ten comma four to. I've I've moved. I've translated this ten comma four, the gradient vector, to the point seven comma five by adding seven comma five to it. Got it, sir. Got it. Okay, so that is the only change that I. Have. So you don't need to worry about this part. This is just to like. Display it here, okay. So, okay. did everyone get the idea of uh, steepest ascent, steepest descent? Yeah. The ascent we need this cos theta to be one, it's maximum yeah. value. Right, right. So you have to move in the direction of the gradient, so that move in the direction of the gradient. So in the lectures, if you notice, they will they would have given this unit vector, a unit vector. Which will give you the steepest ascent direction as the norm of uh, the the gradient vector upon the norm of the right. gradient vector. Right, right. So this gradient vector by norm. Right. This is a unit. We are normalizing this, and the direction is given by the direction in which the gradient is pointing to. So this is steepest ascent. Likewise, the steepest descent will be. The negative of this, right? So move in the opposite 
direction of the gradient that will give you the direction in which the function decreases the most this idea is made use of in optimization right so this idea is made use of in iterative optimization iterative means step by step right iterative optimization algorithms so one very popular algorithm is called gradient descent okay where you start with some point and then you keep moving in the opposite direction of the gradient eventually you will go to the or uh, the minimum right the point where the function's value is the lowest okay this is intuitive i hope this is intuitive you, if you keep decreasing Sir, the value of the function you will go there so what we will achieve by getting the minimum uh you will optimize a function right so many real world problems are optimization problems at the end of the day so it's important to know how to optimize a function and if you can do it in an iterative manner meaning step by step manner it's a conduct it's like convenient to do it over uh, with the help of a computer right so you can let the computer do the job of so once you convert it into a procedure like this algorithm like this computers can take over sir uh, how from that cost data you get this action part ascent part so from this how you convert it into that steepest ascent that formula gradient divided by its log so this is the so theta equal to 0 right for for steepest ascent we want theta equal to 0 so theta equal to 0 would, would mean pointing in the same direction as the gradient okay. it's some multiple of this right so every vector which is a multiple of this positive multiple of this will point in the direction of the gradient okay same direction if you want to unit vector okay. yeah you normalize okay, okay uh, how now, we get this theta theta is coming from the result that we studied last week right in two weeks back in week no, eight, uh, week no, no, sir. Uh, like which uh, from which vector we are uh, getting uh, we are measuring the theta between so between the gradient yeah, but... and the unit vector and unit vector and which direction we should how we and the gradient's it? direction so gradient itself is a vector right and which unit vector we should take how we will because uh, what... we are taking for decreasing so we are taking the uh, uh, that's what we are trying to find out right which we, which unit vector should i take so that my function decreases the most that is what we are claiming here right so you have to take the unit vector which points in the opposite direction of the gradient we need to find that theta right for yeah we need to But... find that unit vector so for example let's do that here no so what what do we have the gradient is uh, 10 comma 4 right yes sir so this is let's simplify this let's this is what uh, the direction i'm only interested in the direction so this is the same as 5 comma 2 which is the same as uh so i i want to find a unit vector right so this is 5 comma 2 divided each you divide by 1 one, one by root 29 root 29. 29 right so this is a unit vector in in the direction of the gradient okay so if you plot this if you plot it would be here, inside that green circle right it's boundary ah uh, right yeah so if you let's plot this using a different color this will look like 7 comma 5 okay and again so it's like i'm starting at 7 and i am adding so this is what we found this out to be 5 comma 2 right 5 comma 2 by root 29 so this is uh, 5 by okay this root 29 can you give me approximately what that is 5 by 5 point give me rough Yeah, I'm assuming it's like 5.2. So 5. this is 5.4. Sorry. 5.4. Okay. And uh, this is 2 by root 29. That will be 2 by same 5.4. Okay. So roughly, you see that this is in the direction of the gradient, right? So this is the direction of steepest ascent. Now, if you if you do the same thing, but instead of adding, if you subtract. Okay, this is the direction of steepest descent. All right, so this is what we have. This is what we are claiming. So, if you move in the direction of the gradient, the function's value will increase the most. If you move in a unit, the direction of the unit vector opposite to the gradient, 
which is this one, the function's value will decrease the most. So these are what are called steepest ascent, steepest descent. So for this vector and uh, this one and this one, theta is 0. Here, theta is 180 degrees, as you can see. Right? So yes. this will correspond to theta equal to 180. Okay, whatever. Yes. So there's a way to do this, but yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, fine with everyone. Shall we move on? Yes. 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 Okay. Sir. So there are some problems. Let's quickly solve one. This is one activity question. So you have this function f of x comma y. So you have to find out the direction in which f is increasing most rapidly, and and you have to find the gradient along the way, right? So we'll just solve this. So this is e power x square plus x y plus y cube. So this is given by f of x comma y is e power x square plus x y plus y cube. Okay, now we have to find the gradient first. Okay, so let's find out uh, nabla of f x comma y equal to. Okay, so this is what? Can you tell me what this this will be? E power two x. Okay, I'll first copy this because that will go on. 2x plus y. Okay, into 2x plus y, that is correct. And what about uh, the the other one? X plus 3y uh, squared. Three x plus 3y squared. Okay, x plus 3y squared, that is correct. Now we have to find the gradient at... Uh, okay, so x squared, so let's see if this is correct. E, e 2x plus y... Uh, yes, sir, it is correct. Yeah, all the options are correct. Oh, none of this is correct, is it? Oh, okay, fine. Now, what we are asked is rapid, uh, most rapidly in the direction decreases most rapidly, right? So, we have now to normalize this. So, let's normalize this. Okay, let's, uh, if you normalize, what will you get? Normalize which vector? At which point, sir? Which point? Uh, oh, good point. So we have to normal, uh, find it first. Find this at uh, one one comma one, right? Let's try to do that at one comma one. So what is the? Let's first do nabla at one comma one. So this turns out to be okay. Here is e into three. E power three is it okay? Yes, three comma. Three comma one. Okay, I'm assuming this is correct. Okay, if four, four, three four comma, comma one. Three comma four. Three comma four. Okay, fine. Okay, this is the gradient. Now, what is the? Uh, are they giving? With the unit vector. Okay, the unit vector in this direction will be where the function increases the most will be. E raised to three uh, and twenty five. Okay, e just. To okay, so it's just three comma four by four. Phi, right so 1 by 5 times yeah. 3 comma 4 okay so one trick i don't know if you read that document i had attached this uh, trick in one of not really a trick so but a computational get, uh, the 1 upon 5 uh, so we are normalizing this so this is a pythagorean triplet right 3 4 the hypotenuse yes, is 5 got it. so, so one that went... where did e one also there right E Normal will disappear, no? Multiple. So you are only look, you are only interested in the unit vector, right? So a unit vector is. Oh, okay, that much. It is kind of like a scalar. Okay. Yeah. So this is a trick to find unit vectors. So this is something I mentioned in one of the documents. So if you have, so if you are if you have a vector like that's of this form, right? This this vector is of what form? It's like some k times x comma or let's k times a comma b this is the form of this vector right e cube times 3 comma 4 it's k times a comma b so if you want a unit vector in this direction you really don't need to worry about k okay so as long as of course you have to be careful whether k is positive or negative so that is important but assume that k is positive then do you agree that k times a comma b and a comma b will be in the same direction Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so now yes. you can pull out all constants, right? If you can pull out all constants for that are present in A and B, 
it makes life simple okay so now it's enough if you work with ekamab that's what we have done here so e cube is e cube and so e cube into 3 comma 4 and 3 comma 4 are anyway vectors in the same direction so you don't need to worry about the e cube anymore if you are finding a unit vector you can just take 3 comma 4 divide by 5 and get a unit vector right so this this option is correct so now if it is negative then ah then then you have to retain the minus 1 right so that that part is so if had this been let's say minus e cube then you can still get away with the e cube but the minus sign you have to retain okay so that's so the only the change question was at 1 comma 1 direction at the point 1 comma 1 increases most rapidly in this direction yeah that's right that's correct no because the direction of the gradient is the direction of rapid increase or most rapid increase therefore this is the direction so sir for every point uh, the direction is different correct it will turn out to be it may turn out to be different right so depending on the point the gradient will keep changing depending on what point you are at right so sir we get this as same whatever was mentioned 1 by 5 3 comma 4 so how does it show like most rapid increase i still don't get it no this is the direction of the gradient right so we are yes, the direction of the gradient is this 1 by 5 comma a unit vector in the direction of gradient is 1 by 5 3 comma 4 okay so this is the direction of the steepest increase that's what we saw here right so the steepest ascent or steepest increase direction is the unit vector along the gradient okay sir okay so do you want uh, to do this part or shall we skip this because it's going to be similar I don't know if it's correct or not, but similar computation. Yeah, yes, it is correct. Okay, it so is. do you want to do or shall we skip this? You can skip, right? Yes. Okay, what is the difference? Ah, uh, okay. So okay, then we'll just quickly do it. So what we are have to do is we have to find the gradient at f of minus one comma one, one comma minus one. So. It will be e to the power minus one. E power minus one. One comma four. One comma. One four. One comma four. Is it okay? So this turns out to be the gradient. Now again, you have to normalize this so you can get rid of e power minus one, and you can just say one by square root of one plus sixteen uh, times one comma four is the direction of the gradient. Okay, this is the direction of the gradient. So the direction of steepest descent or most rapid decrease as we call as they call it here for the function it will be the opposite of right okay, so it will be you can write it down as 1 by root 17 into minus 1 minus 4 or yeah that's how they have given it right so it's the negative of this okay sir okay so that's the all there is to this question now uh Since we have some more time, let's like quickly do this question also. So this is some other activity question. You have a function at the point zero pi by two one. So this here is asking you slightly different question. So what is the direction in which the function's directional derivative turns out to be zero? Okay. So how do you? What is the procedure to solve this? That theta we have to make zero, right? We will take a uh, ninety, like so or something, like, something like that. Okay, so we have to look at the direction which is orthogonal to the gradient. Gradient. Yes. Okay, so for uh, dot product zero, right? Correct. Dot product zero. So let's in this in this question in the earlier question, right? We didn't do that. So let's do that. So phi comma two is pointing in the direction of the gradient. So give me a direction which is perpendicular to phi comma two. What will that be? Can you think of a direction which is perpendicular to phi comma two? Minus two comma five. Correct, right? Minus two comma five, right? So we'll go ahead and plot that. So if you have You have this one, so this is going to be orthogonal to the gradient. So we have taken this and uh, minus two 
comma phi. Okay, this is a unit vector. What we have drawn, this uh, pink color one is perpend is a direction that is perpendicular to the gradient. Okay, so along yes. this direction, the directional derivative is zero. zero, right? So we have to same idea we can apply here. So you have for everything we have to first find the gradient. So this is nabla f of x y z is equal to. Okay, here it's a three variable multivariable function having three variables. Okay, so yeah, you have to tell me what this is. It's two e par. Four, four, right. four, e four e power, power two x. Okay. Sine y z. Sine y z. What about this? Two e power two x. Cos. So that y sine is of whole y z or just of y? I think it is whole. I don't know. I I am hoping it is whole. Let's do it for whole and see if we get the correct answer. So this is cos y z into what? Z. 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 Okay. And this is two uh, e part two x into y. Y, y into cos x y z. Cos x y z. Uh, z into sorry y into y. Uh, cos y z. Okay. That's the gradient. Now we have gradient at the point zero pi by two one. So we are asked to find uh, this one at At uh, zero, sorry zero. This is pi by two. Sir, I And think it's just of y because pi by two it would be just uh, like of course, right? That z is separate, maybe. Ah, uh, okay, right. If that is the case, we'll go back and we'll quickly do do it again. Okay. So see, that yes. is bad way of writing because if it is y z, they should not write it. Switch, can't yes, use it, right? So, okay. So, sine of uh, sine sine pi by two zero. Two into e raised to two x z. Two into e raised to two x y. Sine ninety is one, right? Pi by two. Ah, uh, right. Sorry. So, what is the first component? Is four. Four e raised to two x y. Four e raised to six one. This is no, just four, right? Just four. E power yes, zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is this is what two e par. Zero. Sorry, zero. Zero. the c the c is anyway zero, right? So sorry, this is two times. Zero. So this is whole thing is zero. Cos so, five. Right, right, right. Okay. Zero. This is also zero, right? Yes. Zero. Okay. This is also zero. zero. Now, uh, you have four zero zero. Now this is the direction of the gradient. Or this is the gradient, and also the direction is four zero zero. So which okay. direction will have? Second and the fourth. Okay, so zero one one. 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 Zero one One by root two zero one minus one that is also yes sir. going to have so one by root two zero one minus one and uh, okay this is I I'm not going to read this too many numbers okay so anyway but if you since there are zeros in the y and z it will knock out the two thousand twenty one and what is the before before uh, what? this two Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Clear. Okay. So, mm, right. Okay. So, of course, one more is there, but I am not writing it down. When was? When do you think this question was framed? Do you think so, this question, particular question that you are seeing, when do you think this was framed? Two thousand twenty-one. Ah. Okay. Good. So, this is one common trick which. Uh, All this math Olympiad fellows will do. They will frame a question. So every year this math Olympiad happens, right? In India, various levels. So if it's yes. the year twenty twenty four, they will frame one question which will have some number as twenty twenty four. So kind of an Easter egg there. Yeah. So this 
they give away the fact that it was framed in 2021 maybe we should keep updating it every year since it doesn't matter right any number here will work anyway so that brings us to tangent lines okay so this is yeah so sir, yes, I yes. sir i didn't understand the directions so see there are so the idea is you have to find out all those directions where what is being asked is find all directions for which uh, this f u is zero okay so we have the directional derivative should be zero so directional derivative for a well behaved function is what it is equal to f u of a comma b comma c is the gradient of f at a comma b comma c you take the dot product with a unit vector along u right so u is the unit vector so this is the dot product between the gradient and the unit vector so you're you're asking what all directions are possible for which this dot product is zero right and you you already know what the gradient is gradient is 4 0 0 so you you just need to find what all u1 u2 u3 are possible for which the result will be zero and it turns out that in fact you can gen can write this down as a set of all vectors of the form zero comma y comma z such that y and z are in r so if you take any vector in the set s the dot the, in that direction if you consider a unit vector in that direction the directional derivative along that direction will be zero so not just unit right we can take any now you can take any vector yeah you can take any vector but since they have asked specifically the directional derivative and usually we take direct so we take directional derivatives in a along a unit vector in some direction right hence we yeah so yeah but the is that idea clear now yeah, sir anyway if the if y side is zero that means you uh, whatever number u2 u3 contains it is going to be zero but u1 specifically has to be zero that you were saying right uh, right. So if you look at the options, actually, we don't need to find all directions. We just need, in this case, we just need to look at the options. And if you look at the options, you can see that first, second, and fourth are the possible directions. But if if they extend this question and ask you, give me all possible directions for which this is going to happen, then you have to write down this set, right? So from where does this come? This actually comes from 4u1 equal to 0, uh, u2. So, and then u2, u3, there is nothing, right? So u2, u3 can basically be anything. So this comes from u1, this, this equation, right? If you write down the dot product equal to 0, you will end up with 4u1 plus 0 plus 0 equal to 0. Therefore, u1 equal to 0. u2 and u3 are independent variables. They can take any value. So this is like I'm just extending this question to a slightly general version where they ask you list all possible unit vectors or all possible directions in which the directional derivative will be zero if they ask all the direction then uh, this one right so all directions is con every direction will be contained in this set along any of these directions in the set if you take any direction the Directional derivative will be zero. Okay. Sir, why did you... Sorry, why is? You're asking why I have chosen y comma z, is it? Sir, uh, why it is zero comma y comma z? Uh, because the first coordinate has to be zero, right? This dot product is zero. This dot product is what? Four u one plus zero plus zero, right? Yes, sir. So hence, for u1 has to be 0. 
okay so let's go to tangent lines right so see this tangent lines it's actually a very very simple idea if you are used to tangent line in tangent lines in r1 meaning single variable functions so we'll again look at this canonical example of x square and look at the tangent at let's say 2 comma 4 okay so i'm going to draw a tangent at 2 comma 4 so this is going to be something at 2 okay what is the so i'll first write it down 2 comma 4 so this is uh, 2x 4 into x minus 2 so at x equal to 2 the function's value is 4 okay so this is this is all i can do it's actually seems to be touching at multiple infinitely many points but then that's all the software is able to do okay so you have to assume that this line is green line is touching it at only 2 comma 4 okay that is up to your imagination so we are trying to draw a tangent to f tangent line to f at the point 2 comma 4 okay so this is tangent to the function f of x equal to x square at the point 2 comma 4 it looks like this okay so can someone tell me how we arrived at this equation equation of the tangent sir so using the flat differentiation part okay so see the idea so is using the y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1 correct okay so that's correct so <clears throat> the point Four, so at x equal to two, y is four, right? So two comma four is a point on the function. So one way to see this is the slope of the tangent at two comma four is the derivative. So this is y minus four, four is f prime of two, right? Two comma four. So f prime of two, that's the slope of the tangent times x minus two. Okay, which yes. implies y becomes. 2 times x minus 2 in this case plus 4 which is what i plotted there now th this is the equation of the tangent or, or the tangent line okay at the point 2 comma 4 okay is there any question doubts in this single variable case sir it is y is equal to 4 x minus 2 plus 4 uh sorry yeah this is f prime of 2 is 4 okay thanks yeah yes. okay any questions that anyone has this is, I hope, clear to everyone. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, let's look at look at it this way. The tangent line is actually what is it's it it lies in which space? It would be one, a plane tangent plane. I know for this case, right? Single uh, variable. Two. One D, one it D. lies in R R two, right? Tangent lies in R two, right? The tangent line, it's a line, right? So this this line is one dimensional. That is correct. Yeah. Line is one dimensional, but then it lies in R two. You all agree? Yes. Oh, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lies means that it is a part of R two. Yeah, it's a part of R two. It lies in. So if you if you see that's like if you see what is happening, you can see the green line is in R two. So yes, this is where we tie back to linear algebra. Right. So this is, it is therefore a dash of R2, something here. Subspace. Okay. What kind of a subspace? Affine subspace. subspace. Affine subspace, right? So this is an affine subspace of R2. Okay. So this is going to help us move from this equation of a line in this form to the vector form. Okay, this is the vector form of the tangent line. Okay, it is important because it will help us go to the vector form for a multivariable function. So look at this. So the point is 2 comma 4. So 2 comma 4 is 
anyway going to be there on the tangent line okay and if you go a unit distance right along the x axis okay if you go a unit dis distance along the x axis right one if i move by one along the x axis how steep will this tangent take me along the y axis what will be the rise in the y axis that Okay, see, this is the green line, right? So think about the green line. If I move by one unit along the x-axis, okay, at say at two comma four, I move by one. I'll move to three, right? So on the on the green line, where where will the green line go and touch? Nine. So, at nine. Okay, right. So this is if, if you think about this, it is f prime of. Do you see this? Yes, sir. Okay, so just isolate the tangent tangent line. So move this back to the origin. So how do you move this back to the origin? Uh, like we did in a line subspace that shift by vector some Correct. u. So this is just 4x, right? The slope is yes. what matters. So what I'm asking is if you move by one unit on the x-axis, you move by the slope unit in the y axis. So you move by f prime of 2, which is 4 in this case. OK, so this is unit. OK, so now if I multiply, yeah, so if I now multiply this by t, OK, I have, I have just represented what a vector on this orange line. So 1, comma 4. Okay, in this case, it's 1, 4. 1, comma f prime of 2 is a vector on the orange line. Now, if I multiply by t, what will I end up getting? What the will this part line. represent? The whole line. The whole line, right? Any point on the orange line will look like this. So now if I add 2, comma 4 to it, what, is, what does this correspond to? The fine subspace. Correct, right? This is the tangent line. So the equation okay. of the tangent line is given by in general, right? If you are in if you are dealing with any f of x, not just f f. So I'll just call this uh, in this Sir, case. I just did understand how did you uh, get the origin line using the derivative? Uh, because the slope f prime of two is the slope of the line, right? So slope is what? Delta y by delta x. Therefore, if I if I set delta x to be one, delta y will be the slope. Right, so this this the height by uh, width is the slope. Right now, if I set the width to be one, which is what I'm doing here, the height has to be the slope itself. The derivative. Y equal to m x. Uh, we are setting x to one, so we are getting y equal. Y equal to m. m exactly. Yeah, you can look at it that way. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to find the vector form of the tangent line in R two, uh, sorry, in in R two, but for a single variable function. So at any point a, what will be the function's value? E comma f prime of a. Uh, function's value, right? So this is what this is at x equal to two, y equal to x. F, f of x is f of two, right? F of two is four. This was actually e f of, of two. Okay. okay so e this is actually a comma f of a is the function's value. So the fun the tangent line has to pass through this point. Okay. This is the point through which the tangent line has to pass. The direction of this tangent line will be given by 1 comma f prime of a. Okay, this is a particular point. Therefore, if you multiply this by t, you will get the entire tangent line. This is the underlying subspace of this affine subspace that you have here. Okay, so is this idea clear for a single variable function? Yes. Sir, that one is fixed there. One would be fixed. Ah, one is fixed. Right, the one is fixed. So, in fact, then we got L uh, V plus U form of, of, of a fine that L is on the LHS. You can say V is this A comma F of A, and that U underlying subspace is this. Ah, uh, exactly right. Yeah, this is correct. This is V plus U. This is the V plus U form where uh, V is A comma F of A, uh, and uh, U is the these. It's it's what it's the span of. 
one comma one comma f dash of a right if you have understood this at least to some extent then that means you are un- your understanding of the linear algebra part is clear and that will greatly help you understand tangent lines and tangent planes okay so this please go back and refresh week i don't know which week it was i think sir i understood the affine subspace part, part but I, but i did only didn't understand how did you get uh, the origin line that 1 comma f prime of a see 1 comma f prime of a is what i am trying to describe this green line correct yeah so the green line is what it's the slope of the function slope of the tangent at 2 comma 4 so yeah. the slope of the tangent is what at 2 comma 4 so at, at 2 rather four. at x it's, it's 4 which is f, f prime of 2 correct so yeah. f prime of 2 is the slope of a line so i have just shifting this line parallel to itself moving it to the origin so the slope remains f prime of 2 so yeah. if the slope is f prime of 2 then what does it mean so slope of a line is say y equal to mx is f so this is f prime of 2 and now i just want to describe this line in a vector form so if one is on the line if you take the point 1 the corresponding y coordinate for that point is f prime of 2 so that is how we are describing the entire line so t times 1 comma f prime of 2 will describe the entire line passing through the origin i have just chosen a particular point here that's all okay so we can okay. choose any point any point you can choose just that this is more convenient so this will also tie back to the multivariable case therefore i have chosen okay so now we come back to the multivariable case right so you have tangent lines for multivariable functions also right now let's look at the vector form so i i find it convenient to go from the vector form there are actually three forms that are given in the lectures so we'll start with the vector form okay i'll directly go ahead and write this so do not memorize the formula okay so this is a suggestion from my side never memorize the formula because you can derive it very soon very quickly right in the exam even during the exam you have 90 minutes so okay 90 minutes is not a lot but still this is the idea so find the equation of a tangent line rather of the tangent line passing through the point a comma b comma f of a comma b right so this is a multivariable function two variables so x comma y is a comma b okay the f value is f of a comma b so you have the tangent should always pass through the function at some point okay so that point is this and the idea of directions come naturally to multivariable function so you have to add in the direction given by the unit vector u equal to u1 comma u2 okay so remember this key when it comes to multivariable functions is multiple directions are there so if the function is well behaved meaning if the partial derivatives are continuous so that's something we'll assume then every direction every possible direction at a point a comma b will have a tangent line so there are infinitely many tangent lines at a given point for multivariable function so this is the first thing you have to understand so for a single variable function at a given point there can be only one tangent this is not the case for multivariable functions you have infinitely many tangents okay and we are going to describe the tangent line that passes through one such direction which is given by u1 comma u2 okay so first question this tangent line lies in which space r2 or r4 r3 R3. it lies in r3, r3. okay very very important right so if your function is having say five variables the tangent line will be in r6 okay number of variables plus 1 so why plus 1 now because the function's value is also there right so if the domain is r2 the function is like a surface 
that goes up right so that that is like extending above the 2d plane so you have to have three variables so the okay so this is the idea right this this is because if a function has n variables its surface what we call the function surface the bowl right so for the case of the x square plus y square function it's a bowl its surface lies in r n, n plus, plus one. one plus one okay so if the bowl if you have a two function of two variables the bowl like shape will lie in three dimension space right so one more dimension you have to increase that's because the f of a comma b could get added right so yeah, that is why we can't plot x y z functions exactly so yeah d. right okay so this tangent line lies in r3 now once you know that the tangent line lies in r3 it has to pass through which point this a comma b comma f comma a b right so this is fixed okay you all you already know one point that the tangent has to pass through okay now here is how you remember the rest of the parts of the tangent line okay so see the idea of the moment you have a direction the moment you have a direction you have to think of directional derivatives right so if i move so if you move a very small distance along u okay this is u this is u is u1 comma u2 so if you move a very small distance along u the function's value increases by or or rather the rate at which is given by what gradient ascent so i I'll, I'll just make this clearer so if you move maybe i'll remove the small distance but keep it at the back of your mind so if you move along the direction u the rate at which the function increases at the point a comma b is given by what the rate of derivative at gradient ascent direction derivative correct right? the, the 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 directional derivative right so that's what the directional derivative means right how how fast is the function increasing at a point in a given direction so this is f u of a comma b but do you all agree yes sir. okay so this is what yes. we are trying to find now you are at a comma b and at a b f of a b and you are you are moving by so you can split this u1 comma u2 direction as u1 along the x-axis u2 along the y-axis so if you move by u1 distance along the x-axis and u2 distance along the y-axis you are effectively moving along the direction u okay this you can split it as u1 comma u2 okay yes. now if, if you move in this direction by how much does the function increase along the z direction if you are f u of a comma b right this is by how much the rate at which the function is increasing along this direction okay unit increase in x and y means we are actually moving along u so this this these two together means you are moving along u and the z axis here this tells you by how much the function is increasing okay if if f u turns out to be negative then it means decreasing but in general we say increasing by this much okay this is this is your direction of the vector now yes. you can you, you don't need to move just unit length along this direction you can move by any t t amount in this direction so if you combine this two what you end up with is a line in r3 this is the tangent line at a comma b along the direction u1 comma u2 okay so this is the equation of a tangent line to the function f of x comma y at the point a comma b in the direction given by u1 comma u2 uh, sir here the u1 and the f u a b vector it passes through the origin uh, u1 sorry can you repeat that uh, the vector u1 u2 and f u a comma b uh, passes through the origin ah uh, yes yeah so see all vectors 
have one endpoint at the origin, right? So that is that is the idea. Where so we you are asking because we drew it differently there. Is that is that correct? In the previous examples. No, sir. I am asking because in the previous example, this exact term was the affine uh, the underlying subspace. Of Ah, right, right, right. Yeah, you are right. So this this one passes through the or yeah this this line passes through the origin. This is like again yeah you are right. So this is another affine subspace, but this time it's in R three. So an affine subspace in R three, which is of the form u plus so v plus u, where u is given by span of u one u two f u of a comma b. For n variables, we need n variables and that uh, function of that n variable plus the derivative of them. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. You'll have and n plus one. Analysis. Right, right. Okay, so is this uh, idea clear? What we are calling the tangent line? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now, what you can do is there are. If the question asks you to represent it in other forms, you should be capable of doing this. So this is called the vector form, right? Because we have written it in terms of vectors. So there is something called the parametric form, where we separate the, the individual components, right, in terms of a parameter. So, sir, yeah, sir, if there is R four, then R four, you will just become five variables here, right? So five components. So it's just okay. a comma b comma c comma d comma f of a comma b comma c comma d, and then this will be u one, u two, u three, u four comma f u of a b c d into t. Okay. okay, so just remember it for two variables, and rest is very easy, very easy actually. So the parametric form is actually uh, notice that uh, this is. Sir, so this should uh, so, but this is not any in any types the equation of a line means this does not see as a equation of line. This is a line, right? Because this is what it's an affine subspace. So this is a line. It is some constant times a vector. That's the equation of a line in what we studied in linear algebra, right? So constant times a vector is a line. Span of a comma so say one two three will be a line. In the most RHS. Uh, sorry, can you repeat can that? Can write equal to L. Ah, yeah. yeah. This is some. Yeah, this is some line, not necessarily passing through the origin. So, can we get a question on R four in in term? Ah, uh, it's the same, right? So R four will look very similar to this. Only thing is that it will have A B C D. But can you also become tougher? Can can we? But the calculation will become bigger. Yeah, but conceptually it's the same, right? It's actually if you know what happens to two variables, you can generalize it to any number of variables, right? So calculation, I agree, it may be tougher, but okay, right? So let's now go and look at what what is called the parametric form. So you can actually put this together. This is actually this is what this turns out to be if you add the components. Is a plus b t comma sorry a plus uh, t u one comma b plus t u two comma f of a comma b into so we need all the component in one vector form right one variable we need uh, some, all the some parameter ah right yeah everything in terms of in this case t is the parameter so we can we'll we'll write this down as a plus t u one so this is In the lectures you might see that this is written as x of t, right? X in terms of t is a a plus t u one, and uh, y of t is equal to b plus t u two, and uh, z of t is equal to f of a comma b plus t times. Okay, so the idea is the the following, right? This is my suggestion. You can follow whichever is convenient to you. Don't memorize this. Just try to reason. Starting from the vector form, and once you write things in the vector form, you can easily go to the parametric form. Okay, that's so you can understand the parametric form in this way, right? So first, look at what happens when t equal to zero. If t is equal to zero, you get the point a b f of a comma b. That's a point on the tangent. That's a point on the function, right? That 
tangent has to pass through that point yes and then if you move a small distance along u1 then you move a small distance you the step size you keep the same right that is t so t times u1 t times u2 so you effectively move move in the direction u1 comma u2 that will take you f u of a comma b in the z direction okay so this this will be the change in z this change in z value is the rate of change in z value is given by f u directional derivative derivative means rate of change okay you have to tie all these things together so this is the parametric sir, sir, form yeah sir if sir, you yeah. visualize it it will be more clearer all right that is true yeah you can sir this parametric form is uh, when we are using it so you can use any one of these forms it it depends on sometimes the question may ask you it may give you like not from the point of question like what is the use of this form like this parametric form i'm asking for that ah okay there is no real so that so all these are equivalent forms that is all right so it's just different ways of expressing the same thing sir i thought that parametric form was that cos and sin but cos and no, not necessary right so it's just it's expressing it yeah so theta could be a parameter for so for example so what we mean by parametric form is if you are given an equation so for example you you have the equation of a circle right so equation of a circle is x square plus y square equal to some r square right so yes. of radius r so one way to express this is is to use say x of theta theta comma r Right, two parameters. So I can express x as r cos theta, and and I can express y as r sin theta. So this is a parametric way of uh, expressing this the points that lie on this curve. Okay, so this is a para. We, we call this a parametric form. Likewise, there are want, some parameters which we are varying. Exactly. Yeah, that's the that's the idea, right? So r and theta are parameters which, if you keep varying, you will get all the points that lie on the circle. Likewise, if you vary t, the parameter t here, you will get all the points on the tangent line. That's why it's called a parametric form. Okay. Okay. Apart from that, I don't really see, at least for now, any significance. The other one is the symmetric form that is given there. So this is. another way of writing it right once you have the parametric form just notice that you can this t is common to all three equations so you can just pull that out and write this down as x minus uh, a by sorry u1 so x minus a by u1 is what t okay that is the same as y minus b by u2 so this is the same as y minus b by u2 which is the same as z minus f of a comma b by A comma b by f u of a comma b. Okay, this is another way of expressing the same thing. Okay, so again, notice that if x equal to a, y equal to b, f of z equal to f of a comma b, all three are zero, meaning they all lie on the surface as well as the tangent. Okay, so Sir, all. Sir, at the end of the lecture, uh, can you visualize one tangent in R three? Ah, uh, that may be tough because I'll have to, so I can draw that, but then I don't know how well it will look like. So what you can do is think of the bowl. So this is not too hard. You think about it. Right? Think of a bowl, and you can take any point on the bowl, and you are beating the bowl with a stick. Okay, so think about attaching a stick, or you you have a rod, you have a long rod, and you are just fixing it. you are just pasting it to one side of the bowl right that choose the point add a bubble gum there and then fix the rod stick the rod with the help of this bubble gum to that bowl and keep rotating this rod so you'll get all possible tangents at that point so we can think when we put this ball on a table that table surface if we just take a line on that surface it is acting like a tangent exactly yeah that is another way to think about it okay so I, it's it's not too hard so i if i try to do it i may end up messing things up that's why i'm not uh using geogebra so so let's quickly look at one one let's uh, 
try to solve this problem very quickly. So you have a function x square plus y square. Which of the following is a tangent at the point 1 comma 2 in the direction 1 1 comma 1? Okay, so what we will do is again we won't memorize the formula. Instead, what we'll do is the point 1 comma 1, what is the point? Point is 1 comma 2, right? So 1 comma 2 comma f of 1 comma 2 has to be on the surface. Yes. Okay. And now plus you are looking at moving some distance u1. So u1 in this case is so that u1 is 1 by root 2. If you if you think about it, what is the unit unit vector along this direction? It is 1 by root 2 times 1 comma 1. Okay, so I am moving by 1, 1 by root 2 along the x direction and I am moving by 1 by root 2 along the y direction and I have to move by f u of 1 comma 2, right, the point. So the directional derivative at 1 comma 2. Okay, so this is the equation of the tangent at the point 1 comma 2 along the direction 1 comma 1. Do you all agree? Yes. Okay, so yes. only thing which remains is to compute f u of 1 comma 2. So this is nothing but the gradient of f at 1 comma 2 dot product with this 1 by root 2 of 1 comma 1. Okay, this dot product we have to compute. Now, of course, first gradient, but gradient is very simple, right? It is 2x comma 2y. Yes. Right, so it is 2x comma 2y uh, into so 2x x is what x is 1 so this is 2 and this is 4 okay so 2 comma 4 dot product with this one so this becomes 2 plus 4 right so this becomes 6 by root 2 is that correct yes okay, yes so this becomes 6 by root 2 now i can go back and plug in this this is nothing but 6 by root 2 and uh, f of 1 comma 2 is 1 plus 4 so this becomes 5 so the tangent line therefore is 1 2 1 2 5 so 1 2 5 1 by so they have given it in the parametric form so let's also write it down that way so how do you convert now from the from this form to parametric you just say x x equal to this 1 plus component by component right so x equal to 1 plus t by root 2 uh, and uh, so y is equal to 2 plus t by root 2 and finally you have z equal to 5 plus 6 by root 2 right so let's see if this is there 1 plus t by root 2 2 plus t by root 2, 5 plus 6 t by root 2. That's correct. Yes. Okay, so is this is this fine with everyone? The way to solve this problem? Yes. 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 Okay, so we can. This is something similar. So consider a function which of the following is a tangent. Okay, maybe this has since this has three variables. Let's let's take one example with three variables. So again, let's. You go by first principles, that will always be the good thing. So, which of the following is the tangent at the point 1, 1, 1? So, we are looking at the point 1, 1, 1 and f of 1, 1, 1. Okay, this is the tangent will pass through this point yes. t into something, right? So, t into you move u1 in, a, in this direction, you move by 1 in this direction and 0 in the y direction and 0 in the z direction. So, that results in a function's value increasing by f u of 1 at the point 1 1 1 right so we are at the point 1 1 1 therefore this is the value amount by which rate at which function is increasing so now you have to figure out what f u of 1 1 1 is okay so that is what first you have to find out nabla of f so nabla of f is what i'll quickly write it down that's why. Ah, okay thanks that is easier okay Y is X. okay. Fz is two z. Okay, Fz is two z. Okay, now let's find it out at one one one. So it is five, five one two, one. right? So now we have ah. 
and at yeah that now you have to take the dot product with 1 1 1 1 uh 1 1 so if 512 one. dot product with 100 right okay that will be just 5 correct yes okay that will be just 5 this 1 1 1 will be the function's value at 1 1 1 is 2 plus 1 plus 1 4 right so this is uh 1 1 1 4 so if you just they, they want to express it as a single vector right so not as so th- so it will become 1 plus t comma 1 comma 1 comma 9 okay so is that there here something we have missed okay it should be 5t sorry 4 plus 5t right so 1 plus t 1 1 and 1 plus t 1 1 and 4 plus 5t okay so this is the way to do it for multiple three variables sir this is a tangent uh, but it is in this form because it is also a fine subspace ah uh, right yeah this is a tangent line and yeah this is also an affine subspace okay, okay is this is the last line please so this is just uh, what we are doing here is uh, the dot product of this with the direction 100 so that that gives us so what we have found out is fu of 111 is nothing but this 512 dot product with 100 which is phi okay so that this becomes phi so 100 phi and we are just evaluating the function at 111 okay sir okay so sir i have doubt yeah in the previous question we have taken 1 by root 2 that is the norm here we have not taken 1 by root. yeah because the direction is already a unit vector right so here the direction was 1 1 was not a unit vector therefore we had to convert it into a unit vector and then do and then find the and then solve the problem right so here we are already given a unit vector the standard unit vector e1 right 1 0 0 therefore we don't need to do any normalization okay so u is already there the already unit vector u is 100 0 and this uh, unit vector so you don't need to normalize it okay so this is similar so i'm skipping this It's just a question of okay so it's already late but uh, very quickly let's let's look at this so this tangent plane idea is not too hard right so you just have to do some algebraic jugaad and that will finish things here so we already looked at a tangent line right so we looked at a comma b comma f of a comma b and then you move u1 along one direction u2 along another direction and u f u is the amount by which you move along the z direction you get the tangent line so what we are going to do is we are going to expand this slightly so this fu of a comma b is what it's the dot product right so we'll we'll now write this down in this format so a plus t u1 comma b plus t u2 so here we are expanding that tangent line to tangent plane form right yeah we are trying to get hold of the tangent plane so i am just writing it down in that uh, as a single vector right so and we are going to call this x reasonable thing to do right so this parametric form that's what we did so this is x and this is y and uh, this is z okay z is what f of a comma b plus t f u of a comma b now the z alone we'll play around with it a little, little more so t f u of a comma b is what Can I write it? Correct. So the gradient of f, the dot product with u and u two, the gradient is nothing but partial derivative along x and partial derivative along y. So this becomes f x a b into u one plus f y partial derivative along y into u two. Right? I have just expanded the dot product. Yes. Okay. Now. 
what is this this is f of a comma b plus notice that this t u1 is there here t u2 is there and this t u1 is there in the x and y equations also right so that seems like an interesting thing to separate so I'm, i'll separate the t u1 and write this as fx of a comma b plus t u2 into that i'll put in enclose in bracket into f y of a comma b okay now you look at these three equations and notice that u1 u2 are arbitrary directions right so u1 and u2 can be any direction so we can actually use these equations and get rid of them in this form in this form right so t u1 is what x minus a t u2 is y minus b i'm just rewriting the first two equations okay so i'll plug this in the third equation so this z is equal to what f of a comma b this is what z is equal to right f of a comma b plus this whole thing so in in the place of t u1 i will add x minus a in the place of t u2 i will add y minus b okay what i end up with is the equation of a plane okay and there's we'll rewrite this in a nice way so we'll bring all the x y z to one side so this is x minus a the coefficient of x minus a is fx of a comma b plus y minus b the coefficient of y minus b is f y of a comma b and the coefficient of z is minus 1 okay minus 1 into z okay now x minus a y minus b all on one side z is also on one side on the right hand side you have f of a comma b what you can do is you can bring that here and write it down as minus z in minus z of minus of z minus f of a b now yes, is this fine with everyone we yes, start this equation of a line and get rid of u to get the equation of a plane right okay so see this is actually again very easy to remember if you perhaps you may have to remember uh, memorize this but it's again not too hard so if you notice this this is what we call a tangent plane right this is first of all a plane because this is of the form i'm I, i'm not going to use abc because ab are already there so i'll just use let's say pqr right so this is of the form px plus qy plus uh, rz right equal to some say w okay so this is of the form px plus qy plus rz is w so this is actually a plane Okay, but nice thing is, notice what happens. Uh, the plane passes through the points x equal to a, y equal to b, z equal to f of a comma b. Okay, in fact, you can just write it down as a comma b comma f of a comma b as expected. Okay, so this plane is passing through x equal to a, y equal to b, z equal to f of a b. This is a point on the surface. Correct, which is a point on the surface of the function f. Okay, so this is first thing to note. Uh, the second thing to note is this is actually not necessary, but the plane is perpendicular to a vector. What is the vector that it is perpendicular to? Are you able to see this? It's perpendicular to a particular vector. Uh, partial uh, partial derivative of fx comma fy correct and one more one more point one more component is there right some vector in r3 it is perpendicular to minus one is it sir correct exactly right that's correct that's good so this is the vector is perpendicular perpendicular to maybe before this i should have added one step this is what kind of an object in r3 it's an affine subspace right so this is, an this is again another affine subspace of r3 only thing is that it's an affine subspace of dimension two dimension two right so the underlying subspace this is the vector subspace right sir it is perpendicular or parallel uh it is perpendicular right we'll because the dot product is zero so if you take the dot product with this vector and any point on the plane it will actually turn out to be zero. 
okay so just before going there so the underlying vector subspace is what it's actually this one right fx of ab times x plus fy of ab times y minus z equal to 0 okay so what 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 have we done so the tangent plane is uh, is parallel to the following subspace what is that subspace this one that i've written here so do you all see how how we can get hold of this particular subspace you just need to focus on the coefficients of x y and z that's all how uh, removing that u1 that uh, directional of u1 and u2 changes it to a plane see what we are doing is kind of a this u1 and u2 see every tangent line will look like this correct yes sir so what we are doing is this u1 and u2 are picked arbitrarily right so they can be any in any value u1 and u2 are whatever value you can think of they they should be unit vectors that's the only thing right so what we are doing is we are making use of these three equations to eliminate the reliance on u1 and u2 so that we are taking like a span of u1 and u2 can we say that that uh, plane we... would be span of that tangent line means span means like 2d span not really uh, something like that right yeah every possible tangent line, line. Tangent line shifted we are shifting that tangent line in r2 plane uh we are shifting the tangent line in the so, uh, plane perpendicular to that whichever you have written right like we have got a tangent line and we are moving it uh, in that same plane whichever plane that li uh, line uh, ah right so we are all possible tangent lines will lie in this tangent plane ah. right so the reliance on u1 and u2 is removed so we have removed that reliance on u1 and u2 by making use of the first two equations see we are when we plug in x minus a and y minus b we are essentially doing that right so they are actually placeholders for tu1 and tu2 yeah but this is i agree so i in one sense i agree i'm kind, i kind of understand what you are trying to say it's like where have you like explicitly mentioned that this is the equation of the plane okay so you ended up with a, we ended up with a plane which is correct okay but how is it how is this the tangent plane Is, is the question, is the rephrasing of the question what you have in mind? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we ended up with a plane, correct. But then what makes you claim that this is a tangent plane? So I have not explained it properly because I myself am like not 100% convinced uh, how we got here. But the algebra works out, if you notice. Yes, sir. The algebra works out and we end up with a plane. So this has to be the tangent plane. This is a very bad way of convincing anyone but for now let's stick to this if that is if you have agreed with that particular statement are you all able to see that this is the uh, subspace corresponding to this affine plane yes sir okay so very very quickly before we close let's do one example sir uh, one question here yeah that tangent uh, plane would uh, like have a common plan point with that function at a point or at a line right at a point right the, the idea of a tangent still remains the same right so all it tangent be... locally it will have only one point in common with the function which is a b f of a b whatever we take like tangent plane or line it would still be a just a point uh, locally right? right so yeah locally it will touch the function in the neighborhood but... of the point a comma b only at a comma b Okay, okay. Okay, but of course it may end up intersecting the surface at some other point if you go beyond well beyond the neighborhood of a comma b. Yeah, no, I'm talking okay. about that neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, so which of the following equations represent the tangent plane to the function at the point? Again, you can either go from first principles, but maybe that will take slightly too long, slightly take 
longer route here. So what we'll do is think about this in the following way: all the, the plane has to pass through a comma b, right? So you have x minus a, you have y minus b, and you have z minus f of a comma b. So this part you have to rem there's no need to remember this, right? This should come naturally to you. The only thing you have to remember or memorize in some sense is the coefficients, right? So this has to be again, this is not too hard to remember because x is associated with fx, right? And y is associated with fy. And uh, z is in this case, just you have a minus one floating around. So that is how you can kind of quickly memorize this uh, tangent plane business, right? So this has to be zero. Now it's a question of finding out the partial derivatives and plugging them here. So uh, at the point one, so let's quickly compute f. F is what here? This. 6x plus y. 6x plus y. 4y plus x. Minus 4y. Uh, sorry, this is x minus 4y, right? X minus yes, 4y. And that's all, right? So this. And at the point 1, comma minus 1, this is going to this will turn out to be 1, comma minus 1. So this is 5, comma 5, is it? Yes. OK, 5, comma 5. So you just plug this in. So 5 into x minus 1 plus 5 into y plus 1, because it's 1, comma minus 1, minus z, in, z minus f of a, b is. Sir, so we needed this partial derivative or that uh, directional derivative. Uh, this, just partial. Partial, yeah, partial. The, so the gradient one only, no, uh, no multiplying with that. Yeah, yeah, no need to take partial. the dot product. Okay, f of a b is what? One three three minus one two minus two minus one is it? I don't know. I am kind of in a hurry now. So I am hoping this is correct. So you end up with 5x plus 5y minus z equal to z minus? Oh, z, there's no nothing here, is it? So this is just z. So this means this is 5x plus 5y minus z equal to 0. I hope that is the correct answer. So. This surprisingly turned out to be a subspace in itself, right? So this is uh, this passes through the origin, but in general it may not. Okay, so there's no need for it to pass through the origin. In this case, it passes through the origin. Okay, so I don't have time for linear approximation, but in questions, so where they ask for linear approximation, they are essentially asking you to find the tangent plane. Okay, so do you all kind of understand why it's called why they are uh, why it's called a linear approximation? No, sir. Uh, okay, so maybe we are like flattening out that plane in a linear form, and that would be the tangent plane. In case there is a discontinuity. Sir, it is same from the maths one concept, no, sir. Ah, uh, right. So it's the same concept as this one. Uh, so this is a linear approximation. The tan the line here. It's a linear approximation to x square at the point 2 comma 4. So the tangent line at 2 comma 4 is a linear approximation to x square. Why is it linear? Because it's a line. Why it's an approximation? Because if you see, even the software agrees that this tangent line is nicely approximating f of x locally, right? Or around the point x equal to 2, it's, it's a good approximation to f of x. So for a two variable function, the tangent plane will be a good approximation to f of x comma y at some a comma b. So we can think of it like the best fit line or best fit plane, whichever best fit that point, that function are uh, neighboring that point. Exactly. Yeah, that is that's correct, right? So maybe what we'll try to do, I don't know how well this will look. Uh, I'll close with this, but if you can, uh, you can plot this. On GeoGebra. Uh, Sir, this... linear approximation means we can take plane and line both also because both are uh, anyways passing through the same point only. Uh, right, but then a pl plane is more appropriate right? because it has slightly more information.
there are more so a line will have only one direction but the function is defined along you can move along multiple directions right so plane is slightly better in that sense but i have a bad analogy like if we uh, crumble a paper and like flatten it out the crumbs you can think of it as the function and when we are flattening we are taking a linear approximation so if we flatten it out on a table we like on a plane we are getting better approximation of that function mm, right rather than on a string right yeah i guess that would work so let me write down this function this is what this is 3x square uh, plus xy plus xy and minus 2y square right so this is minus 2y square so this looks something like why is this not working what is it saying okay three so this is a function of two variables right why is it complaining 3x square plus xy plus xy okay six comma y okay three x square plus xy minus two y square so minus two y square then y power 12 oh sorry x three x square i'm doing change of tabs that therefore this thing is doing all sorts of crazy things so this is okay sorry let me do this so can someone tell me this three x square minus x y plus y square right this that's what i told no yes sir. yes ah okay this is some kind of uh, elliptical boat okay so that is how the function looks like now let's take the tangent that we plotted at one comma minus one comma so that turned out to be one comma minus one comma zero is that correct Okay, so this is 2y square actually. Okay, so at 1 comma minus 1, what is the function's value? It is four. Actually, 3x square plus x square. 6. 1 comma minus 1. 6. That's 6. 3, 3 minus, okay, 3 minus 1 minus 2, right? So three minus of minus one. Three plus one. Uh, okay. So three plus one. So four minus two. Correct. Oh, plus two. So it's six. Sir. Oh, sorry, sorry. This I'm looking at. Right? This was this was actually minus two a square. That's why. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Now what is it? It is four minus two. Now it is two. Right. So this is two. Now we have to plot the the tangent turns out to be. The point was actually one comma minus one comma two. Is that correct? So that point is here. Can you all see that this point is here? Yes. No, the tangent yes, tangent was what five x plus five y equal to zero. zero. Equal to z, right? That's what we got. So five x plus five y. Uh, see, yeah, see, I think we made some mistake in the tangent computation. Uh, is it not coming? So this is activity question two. So what is the answer? Which activity, sir? Activity 10.3. This is question number two. Can someone tell me what the answer is? I will see this. So question number two, the answer is correct. So why is this then? This doesn't look like a tangent, right? Something is wrong. Or maybe it does look like a tangent, but we are able to visualize only this much. From a different, you can intersect it and remove the graph. Yeah, but see, it's not even passing through. 
does this pass through p1 minus 1 how can it be z equal to 5x plus 5y then something Sir, is for the function is here 3x square plus oh right right see another mistake yeah this is plus xy Uh, okay, so and it is one comma minus one comma zero. Ah, right. Okay, so this is what you told at the beginning. I made a mistake. Yeah, thank you. Okay, now it seems like a tangent. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, let's intersect and remove. Let's see what we get. So if we know, you can hide the, that. So where is the point? Point is here, right? So this point is actually on the xy plane, so that's why it's not very. We mm. hide the surface. Okay, so if you intersect, so can you see that the point actually lies on the plane? Yes, sir. Okay, the it's point clear. lies on the plane, and uh, this is a tangent to this. Unfortunately, if you intersect it along this plane, the surface. What you end up with is two two perpendicular lines like this. That's the re that's the nature of the. Sir, uh, uh, here, yeah, along uh, around the neighborhood of that point, we are getting a linear approximation as that plane of that function. Ah, uh, right. And this is uh, this plane is tangent. Uh, to that uh, function only around this point, right? That yeah, correct. Uh, this plane is a tangent only at around for the at this point. It's a tangent to the surface. Okay. Okay. So why? Uh, okay. If you unhide this again, so if you kind of think about this, it's probably intersecting the function at other points also, right? But then uh, all that we care about is at this particular point. It is a tangent. Yeah. So this particular point, it is a tangent to the function, and it's a, this is a local approximation to the function at this point. So locally means the very very lo local, right? So very local phenomenon, and not somewhere else far over, far away. Right? It's only okay. So that's all we have for today. The part that is remaining is this critical points, right? So when is Maxima, minima, saddle point, critical point. That All minus is by 2a form for the line which we did, we have to expand for the multiple variable, right? Uh, which one? For minima and maxima, we did write minus b by 2a form of minima and maxima. Uh, right. So the f dash of x equal to 0, right? For extremum, uh, and then you have to likewise for this will correspond to gradient of f equal to 0. So instead of checking if the function's derivative is 0, we have to check if the function's partial derivatives are 0. So all of them are just 1. All of them are. Uh, so all, all the partial derivatives, zero. yeah, all partial derivatives, you have to check if they are 0. And uh, there was some form like greater than and for less than that it would be ma uh, that is correct so that's the second derivative test right so that is yeah, that will yeah. come in the last week the last week meaning 11th week so that's actually not much to do in multivariable calculus if you know how to do this tangent line tangent plane and then yes, gradient functional this directional derivative and then maxima minima there is something called hcn so hcn is like a matrix of partial second order derivatives right so d square f by dx square that part which we had for single variable here you'll have do the like del f by del square f by del x square so that part will come so that will come in next week second order partial for correct that yeah is, right so week 12 i think there's nothing now uh, nothing is there week 12 is a refresher uh, like this revision week okay yes sir. okay yeah so thanks so, this thank you and Means. Yeah, what is the use of uh, finding the tangents? Tangent planes are useful, like they give you linear approximations and 
linear functions are typically much more easier to deal with compared to their non-linear counterparts, right? So this linearization is a very powerful concept. Once you linearize something, you are you go back to the domain of linear algebra, right? So you are dealing with no affine spaces. And whatever you have done for affine spaces, all those concepts you can make use of. Yeah. Sir, that computation time we can think goes from n square to n for linear functions. Right. Uh, which one? Sorry. In the terms of computation, if we uh, reduce ah, it right. to linear approximation, the computation times also reduce right, right. it. Yeah. O -N. Right. Yeah. Th that would also, I guess, be an advantage. Okay. So thanks for joining. We'll meet again soon. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.